It's time to Get Real with Eddie, here to help you understand the changing real estate market and meet your real estate goals. Over 19 years in the business, 2018 Realtor of the Year of Three Rivers, past president of the Three Rivers Association of Realtors, director at the Illinois Association of Realtors, and team lead of the Rudiger Group at Baird & Warner. Here's Eddie Rudiger. And welcome to Get Real with Eddie. Here in the studio, I have, of course, with me, the one that can do an inspection on a house in a matter of seconds or hours. Nancy Valley from the Rudiger Group at Baird and Warner. And of course, he is the only one that can run a mile under a minute, maybe not. It's Roberto Bellarul from the Rudiger Group also. We have the whole team back together again. Yeah. This is three weeks in a row. How about yeah. that? I mean, this is a great kickoff to the new year. Um, so I'm I'm really excited. I So far, the phones have been ringing for myself. I know you guys have been busy already. Yep. And this is just crazy. And it's only the 11th. I mean, honestly, January 11th, and this is already taking off. Yeah. So um, let's get right into it. Uh, so I wanted to first talk about key things to avoid after applying for a mortgage. So these are really the stuff that your friend that you didn't use as a real estate agent is going to tell you to do, but you should not be doing because it will mess up your mortgage. <laughs> so with that, um, right off the bat, let's get into uh, the things to avoid. Roberto, what's the first thing to avoid? Number uno is don't deposit cash into bank accounts before speaking with your lender. That's a great point. Yeah. yeah. I, I, honestly, because they have to source income. Mm -hmm. They got to know where it's coming from. Yes. Yeah, you kind of a suspicious. bunch of money magically appears. Looks a little bit suspicious. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's got to look legit. It's got to look like, okay, you're not, all your income's coming from a true job and you're not getting income here or there on miscellaneous because you've not been, not been something illegal you know something that you know okay well i got a thousand dollars because i sold a piece of artwork that's legal mm -hmm. but guess what that's not going to happen the next month or the month after that so what is the number two thing not to do it's uh, don't make any large purchases like a new car or furniture for home. That's a big, big, big no, no. Don't buy anything expensive before purchasing your home. And there's a couple of reasons on that. Or reason number one is if you're buying cash, what if something goes wrong in the transaction and you need the cash? Mm -hmm. All right. If you're not buying cash and you're financing, you just changed your debt to income ratios and get created more debt. Yes. So you have to be very careful. And, you know, things happen. Life happens. Sometimes people's cars break down and they need a new one mm -hmm. or they get into a car accident. Knock on wood, so nobody has a problem. Uh -huh. But it happens. So just talk to your lender. Say, hey, what can I, you know, what can I do? What can I afford? Robbins. They'll help you out. Yeah. They'll help you out. All right, so what is the th third? Uh, don't co co-sign other loans for anyone. And that goes back to the debt to income ratio. I mean, honestly. That again, you're, oh, just, yeah. Yeah. you're yeah. creating more debt for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your kid that wants the new, that needs the car, or the house or whatever, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, it's gonna look bad and when they when you know when you get your approval it's not gonna you're not gonna be able to afford as much right. just because of that absolutely exactly. all right so what is the next thing not to do uh don't change bank accounts don't change bank accounts that's interesting yeah I, i've never heard that before yeah i guess you want the bank history yeah and why are you flipping accounts or are you just adding an account like let's say I, I, you want a christmas fund or you know i guess it just looks i guess suspicious you know maybe i i and that's kind of odd to me and honest i never really kind of heard about that you know? well they have to source and track the assets 
that task is much easier when it's from one account. Mm -hmm. um, so if you all of a sudden open up three or four different accounts or have all these accounts spread it over, they need to see all those accounts because believe it or not, when you do a credit pull, bank accounts do show up on that credit pull. It shows where you have, because that is an open, even though it's like a checking account and it's not, but there, it's technically like a line of credit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a different aspect to it, but that's a big part of it. Um, what's the next one? Now it's apply for new credits. And that makes sense because even if you um, turned around and went to a store and you got the 25 or 50% off, if you fill out the credit card, oh, yeah. you're, wow. even if you don't use the credit card, you could qualify for $1,000 mm -hmm. or $2,000. They won't know for 30 or 60 days, depending on when that falls in the rotation, mm -hmm. on, well, they got $2,000 of credit, but how much of it did they use? Did they use any of it? So you're trying to close a house in 30 days, and that's falling into the situation there. So what is the um, last, number six, the last thing not to do? To don't close any credit accounts. It's a valid point because the credit accounts are history. They are a aspect of the mortgage or what your credit history is. And when you close some accounts, if it had a balance, it may put you into a kind of pseudo collection thing. I don't know. But um, having those accounts closed also creates less credit availability. And it makes you risky where if I have five credit cards mm -hmm. established, they're all paid off as zero balance. Okay. Each of them, let's say, has a $5,000 limit. That means I have $25,000 of open credit, but I'm not using it. Mm -hmm. That shows, and, and there's a history to that. Let's say in the last five years, shows that I'm a good credit risk. I, five years and I got zero balance. That I think is really huge. So, so some good tips starting the year off. Um, so I want to get into next a uh, why waiting to sell a house could cost you a small fortune. So Nancy, what is the first uh, reason that uh, it could cost you a small fortune if you wait? Well, buyers are looking right now um, they're ready to purchase a uh, showing time showing index, which I found this really fascinating when I was reading this article, um, shows more than 6 million property showings scheduled across the country each month. In other words, it's a gauge of how many buyers are out there looking at homes. Uh, the latest index, which covers November, that's the most recent, reveals that buyers are still active, which we've been talking about, the fall market is been very active. Um, the graph that they're showing uh, shows index higher than last year and much higher than the three previous years prior to the pandemic. So everybody's out there. There's a there's a market for your home. Well, and that was the big thing that I took away from this. So the graphic shows in the index and the 100 is a normal index. 103.9 in 2017, okay? 18 was 98.2, and I remember 18. That was a rough real estate year. It was, believe it or not, prices went up, but it just, it, we felt like we were stuck in the mud. No one understood what was going on. Um, interest rates were kind of just sluggish and not really going up, but kind of a little bit. There was talk of them going up. Um, and they actually, they did start moving up towards the middle and end of 18. 19, we saw rates come back down a little bit and you saw 107.2 on the index. And then we get into 2020, it jumped to 156.3. 2021, it was a 175.7 in November. Yeah, that just boggled my mind. I mean, so there is a huge amount of traffic and stuff going on. So the other aspect on this is um, pending 
the pending sales I want to get into. But first, um, what did Freddie Mac address, uh, Roberto? Uh, the buyers who are willing to house hunt in a winter market where there are fewer options are typically more serious, plus year-end bonuses and overtime payouts give people <coughs> more purchasing power. It, you can't argue with that. Yeah. I mean, that's a great uh, point. So People don't kick the tires when it's five below. Yeah, and even in November, it wasn't five below. No. It was like 40 degrees this November for us. Yeah, that's pretty good. But... It was a very mild fall. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how much that played. In our particular market, I think that played some, some, you know, influence was that it was a nice fall. It wasn't really cold. It wasn't really... Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. But I think... People were out longer. People, I don't think it's going to matter in the long run. Exactly, but, yeah. I, I think um, it's going to be a interesting scenario of what goes forward. So the uh, latest index shows um, the National Association of Realtors published this, and housing demand continues to be high. Uh, homes placed on the market for sale go from list status to under contract in approximately 18 days. So that is another huge aspect of where you're missing out. Now, when you look at pending sales, all right, over the last five Novembers, again, looking at what was going on in November, we're waiting on December numbers still, but 17 pending uh, units, um, and is it this in millions? It's gotta be in, it's gotta be. in millions, because yeah. this wouldn't be an index. So compared to the index of November, while well, slightly below 2020, the previous years so that was the one thing i think so they've got it out pending sales over the last five years so 17 109.6 18 101 19 108 2020 125.8 and then still 2021 122.4 yeah so still super high yeah uh so the second reason that you kind of get into this is other sellers plan to list earlier this year. So the law of supply and demand tells us that if you want the best price possible, negotiate your ideal contract terms, put your house on the market when there's a strong demand and less competition. Right. Simple I mean, supply and demand. You yep. want to be out there when other people aren't. Less competition from other sellers. A recent study by Realtor.com reveals that unlikely, unlike the previous years, sellers plan to list their home in the winter instead of waiting until the spring or summer. The study shows 65% of sellers who plan to sell in 2022 have already listed their home. That's 19% um, are planning to put it on the market this winter. So that I think is an interesting take on this. Yeah, I, I, and I think pe sellers, people that want to sell are getting the message that buyers are out there, don't wait for spring market. Well, they're out there year round. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the time. They haven't stopped. They're still buying. They're still I've, I've been, I just got two offers accepted. I was in a bidding war with both of them. And, and you just got done with a home inspection last week. Um, wasn't that the a third contract or was that one of the other two? That was one of the other two. That was one of the other two, okay. Yeah. So, um, so, all right. Um, number three on this uh, reason why waiting to sell could cost you more. Um, Roberto, what's the third? Uh, newly constructed homes will be your competition in the spring. And uh, 2020, there were over nine, 979,000 new single family housing units authorized by building permits. Many of those homes have yet to be built because of labor shortages and supply chain bottlenecks brought on by the pandemic. They will however be completed in 2022. That will create additional competition when you sell your house. Beating these newly constructed homes to the market is something you should consider to ensure your house gets as much attention from, from interested buyers as possible. And right now that's so true because they're in a standstill. 
The ground's too cold. Yeah. They, they can't break ground. So they can't do anything to move this forward. They can't do anything to get anything set up. So with that being said, they are looking right now, from what I've seen on most new construction, mm -hmm. their delivery dates are September to October of next year. Mm -hmm. That I think is huge. Yeah. It's huge. I mean, they're just, you know, if you're thinking of selling, I think that's a perfect opportunity before, you know, before doing that and before those home, new homes come out, you know, do that before. Yeah. Less competition, more, you know, more bang for a buck. Absolutely. All right, Nancy, what's the fourth uh, reason you could miss out on a small fortune? Uh, there will never be a better time to move up. So if you're moving into a larger, more expensive home, consider doing it now. Prices are projected to appreciate by approximately 5% over the next 12 months, which we were talking about what, last week. That means it will cost you more, both in down payment and mortgage payment, if you wait. You can also lock in your 30-year housing expense with a mortgage rate in the low threes right now. If you're thinking of selling in 2022, you may want to do it now instead of waiting as mortgage rates are forecast to rise throughout the year. So you're selling, buy more, do it now. Well, and the other aspect of this, none of us last, uh, when we were going over what we thought 2022 gains were gonna be, none of us thought our market was gonna be 5%. We were all like seven to eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, so none of us are sitting there looking at a 5% growth. So that's even more. If you're looking, you know, at a $300,000 house and you're turning around, I mean, 3% on that, that's nine grand. Mm -hmm. So that's a big change. So, all right. What's the last one um, on the list, Roberto? It may, it may be time for you to make the change. Consider why you're thinking of selling in the first place and determine whether it's worth waiting. <clears throat> is waiting more important than being closer to your loved ones now? Is waiting more important than your health? Is waiting more important than having the space you truly need? Only you know the answers to those questions. Take time to think about your goals and priorities as we move into 2022 and consider what's most important to act on now. Yeah, I mean, it's basically, you know, you know, ask yourself the question, is it worth, worth, um, you know, putting your house on the market? You know, it's all, it all depends on you. Well, and that's the aspect um, you're, you're looking at is the pandemic, I think, is starting to wean when it comes to people waiting. It, we're getting into the third year of mm -hmm. this. Yeah. And people are like, all right, I'm tired of waiting to live my life. I'm just going to live my life, mm -hmm. you know. And let's be honest. We all know what we, our risk and reward is and what we can and can't do and ways to prevent getting sick. Um, so that's it. They're just people are, I think are starting to really make that move. And they're not waiting for the pandemic to end. Um, and many think it's coming to an end. With this Omicron variant burning through so quick and so fast, mm -hmm. um, you know, I know many people that just said, yeah, I'm vaccinated. We're all going to get sick and then we're going to be done with it. I'm vaccinated. I'm not going to die. And, you know, that was it. And hopefully that holds true for them. Um, you know, and, you know, a lot of them are like, I still wear my mask and all that. So I really think it's gotten to that point where life's too short basically i'm moving well i think people are realizing there's a new normal you know their company is is i'm, hybrid. I, I'm smiling over here because did you see that uh what, what university came out and said the words that were eliminated for 2022 oh, new normal? and new normal was one of them really well here i am <laughs> cancel and you're yeah. canceled. I am I canceled now? So, um, but no, you're right. But, you know, a lot of people are working hybrid or they're working from home now that they didn't have a chance. So now they can relocate. You know, they need more space or maybe they want to move out of state because they don't have to go in the office anymore. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to move that two years ago there weren't. 
Yeah. So. All right. So really quick, um, let's uh, jump to playing field numbers before we uh, hit a break here. Um, so I wanted to look, I got both November and October, again, still waiting on December numbers to come out, should be out shortly. Um, but playing field overall. So <coughs> new, <coughs> new lasting, <coughs> as I start getting a cough and I can't shake. Nancy, go ahead All and right, take that. So. <laughs> We're gonna let Eddie gather himself up. Oh. So uh, detached homes, we're talking um, November of 2021, median sales price was 350,000, was up 12.3%. Uh, average sale price, 373,156, up 13%. And percentage of a res, a reg, original, now I can't talk, he's coughing, I can't talk. <coughs> up to you, Roberto. Um, is 100.8%. 100.6. Or six, sorry, I can't read either. Um, <laughs> average market time, 24 days. Inventory of homes at the end of the month, 89, which I found interesting. That inventory of homes, though, is still down 46.7%. Yes. Yeah. But it's it's more than we've had. I'd like to, I wish we had I have our numbers. I, we I like had October. October's right there. There was 129 houses. Of so it's still down. Yeah. yeah. So it's even less, less than what it was in October. Yeah. yeah. Which so, was down. Yeah. 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 End of October, there was 129 houses available. End of November, 89 houses available. So that means the inventory shrunk even more, again, setting us up for a very tight spring. Because usually November, December, October, you know, those months, you get that buildup of inventory historically. And then houses, oh, they get picked off right off the bat with the buyers in your February and your March. Mm -hmm. So that not... It's not leaving a lot of property. All right, on the attached side, what do we have for the attached, uh, Roberto? Um, for the new listings, there's 32, 32 new listings um, that were up 6.7 percent, and um, for the average, the average uh, sale price is 236,104, and we're up 12 percent, 12.5 percent, and the. Average market time is 16 days, which is negative 56.8%. Uh, and the inventory of homes at the, at the end of the month is 20. So we're negative 16.7%. So that's a big, big change. You're looking at 109 options in Plainfield, where in October, there was 32 and 29, so you had 50, 60, 161. So that's almost a 50, per, that's better than a 50% reduction, or a 30% reduction yeah. in inventory. That's crazy. Yeah, so it, it's going to be um, interesting to see how everything moves and the numbers that come out finishing the year off in December. All right, so when we get back after the break, how much do you need for a down payment? Keep it here with Get Real with Eddie. Welcome back to Get Real with Eddie. Hey, if you want information on buying or selling a house, give Roberto a call. Roberto, what is the best number to reach you at? It is 815-995-5433. And that website address is? It's casaswithroberto.com. Or you can give me a call at 815-823-5478 or yourdwellings.com. So how much do you need in your down payment? So I really wanna get into this because I remember we just had a show and we talked about the advantages of putting down 20%. But there's still this concept out there where people think I gotta have 20% and that's just not true. So how much down payment do you actually need? Three to three and a half percent, depending on the program. Correct. You know, it just depends on the program. So Freddie, Freddie Mac, if I can't be tongue-tied, the most damaging down payment myth since it stops 
the whole buying process before it can start is the belief that 20% down is necessary. And it is, you're, it's not. It's that three to three and a half, three percent down conventional, three and a half percent down FHA. Yeah. And actually, it could be zero percent down. I was down. just going to say, unless you're a uh, vet, yeah, in which case it's zero down. down. Yeah. yeah, and it, it does, doesn't necessarily have to be vet. If you're looking at a um, USDA loan for, yeah. you know, like it's areas of Grundy County, things like that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, where you're away from the city, yeah. some of those more rural areas, they qualify um, for a 100% down USDA loan. So that is always an option to uh, go with. So, um, so today's median down payment is a lot lower than you think. First time home buyer averaged what, Roberto? 7%. All right, it's 7%. What was the average down payment for all the buyers? Uh, 13%. All right, so the misconception there, most people aren't putting 20% down. Yeah. I, I see very few, well, if they're, if they're, if this is their second or third home and they've got, quite a bit of equity, they'll turn around and put that money down. But as far as first time buyer? Yeah, they don't, I mean. Three, three and a half percent? Five percent, maybe. Yeah, it's a big, big difference um, in that belief structure that you don't have to put 20% down. I mean, there are tons of options out there where you can do that 3%, three and a half percent down. And maybe you're not going VA or USDA. Maybe you're going to look at down payment assistance. There's tons of down payment assistance programs out there. So you could do a 3%, 3.5% down and then get a down payment program where now you're getting down payment assistance. And you can pay back those programs as well. Depending on what the program Depending is. Depending on what the program is. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So, all right, moving on. Um, experts insight for 2022. We've been talking about the predictions um, and what they're saying for 2022. Our first prediction is from First American, Nancy. What did their chief economist say? Odetta Cushy. Chief Economist from First American says consensus forecasts put rates at about 3.7% by the end of 2022. I think that's pretty much what we all said. Was I, think you, I think Roberto was 3.6. Do I need to get my wallet out and look at I was 3.7. Yeah. I, I was 3.7. I'm just saying. All right, while you're pulling it out of your wallet, um, I'm going to read what Dan Yell Hale, Chief Economist from Realtor.com. Affordability will increasingly be a challenge as interest rates and prices rise, but remote work may expand search areas and enable younger buyers to find their first home sooner than they might have otherwise. And with more than 45 million millennials within their prime first time buying ages of 26 to 35 heading into 2022, we expect the market to remain competitive. I'm going to say that again. Go ahead. We again. expect the market to remain competitive. All right, what was our interest rate? Okay, Nancy said, Nancy said 3.7. Okay. Right. Roberto said 3.6, and right. he said 3.7. Yeah, all right. I knew I was 3.7. And I knew I was 3.7. I knew he was low. I knew he went uh, 3.6. So. You get us off. You'll, you'll probably take it. We'll see. Should we get, we get interested maybe a little bit? Little... Gambling is yeah. illegal. Oh. I would never do anything like that. I, I think there could be a dinner somewhere in there. Yeah. There could be a dinner. That could, could be a gift, dinner. gift card or something. So, I don't know. Or a donation to a charity. That is yeah. also a good idea. There we go. Yeah. We'll have to think, figure that out. All right. Yeah. What did Lawrence Yoon, Chief Economist for the National Association of Realtors, <laughs> say, Roberto? With more housing inventory to hit the markets, the 10 to multiple offers will start to ease. 
Home prices will continue to rise, but at a slower pace. Did you see the difference between Danielle Hale and Lawrence Yoon? Did you know she expects the market to remain competitive because she's looking at the number of buyers in the market where Lawrence Yoon is seeing inventory going up because more people are going to sell their house. So he thinks that the prices are going to slow. The price of increase mm -hmm. is going to slow. That's interesting. A little, I think they're both could be right though. Yeah. But they both could be right. You could see a very competitive market, but not as competitive as it was over the summer. I, mean, I can't imagine it being as competitive as it was summer of 2021. I would like to still write into an offer that we will have a taco truck show up on moving day I tried for the to seller. sneak it in there. I just got it. I just wrote an offer that I was like, do you want to put offer a taco truck? It was multiple offers. We could have. So, I mean, who doesn't love a taco truck? I know, I know yeah. So. <coughs> we, we did get the offer. Well, of course you did. All right, George Ratatouille, manager of economic research at Realtor.com. We also expect a growing number of homeowners to bring properties to market, taking some pressure off high prices and offering buyers more options. We will see if that is true. Mark Fleming, I'm going to finish this off uh, here um, so we can get to our listing. Uh, Chief Economist for First American also said strong demographic demand will continue act as the wind in the housing market sales. Strong demographic demand will continue to act as the wind in the housing markets. That is a tongue twister. I think what he is referring to is the same thing Daniel Hale pointed out, and that is seeing the millennials a number of them that are in that buying market. What did she have down? Uh, four, 45 million millennials looking to buy a house. Yeah, so after last year, maybe it's 44 million now. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I it's mean, still a lot of people. Yeah, it's around. still an amazing amount of people that are looking um, for a house. So, all right, um, let's take a look at the uh, property on at 16044 South Crescent Lane in Plainfield. This is a three bedroom, a full bath uh, property. It is a one story ranch. Um, it is a Richfield model in Creekside Crossing. Um, it has a sunroom addition, giving you the extra square footage. So the total square footage is 2,441 square feet on this ranch with a 2,441 square foot basement. I'd be down with that. That is a huge house. It's a big house. That's nice. When you start talking that, that basement addition, that is huge. This is a three car garage model. Um, so it has got the two bedrooms up front and then your master bathroom is off in the back, uh, giving you some space from the first two bedrooms. Um, so. It is a great property. Um, again, quartz counters in the kitchen. Um, you're also looking at the quartz in the dining room, open floor plan, and um, the, the sunroom is just beautiful. Downright beautiful. So this is a great um, great property to take a look at. If you got questions, give me a call, 815-823-5478. We'd love to help you in any way. Um, all right, so when we get back, I want to talk about why selling your house with a real estate professional is essential. So keep you here with Get Real with Eddie. Welcome back to Get Real with Eddie. Hey, if you've got questions pertaining to buying or selling, of course, give Nancy a call. Nancy, what's the best number they can reach you at? You can get a hold of me at 815-545-1162. And that wonderful website? It's Valley Dream Homes. Com. All right, so I wanted to get into why selling your house with a real estate professional is essential. Um, there's a lot of different reasons. Um, what, I mean, off your top of your head, why would you guys encourage someone 
to use a, even if it's not us, just use a real tour overall? Overall, it's a better experience, whether it's any of us, and it protects, you are a professional protecting the best interest of that client, no matter what. And then it's also, you know, less stressful. You know, we're dealing with, you know, the biggest investment in your life, and that comes with a lot of stress when you're dealing with these transactions. So, um, you know, just better to deal with a professional that does this all the time. Um, so you won't have that, you know, that headache, that, you know, that, I guess, penance, because, you know, this is just, it's a big deal. It's a big deal, and I think, you know, so much to oversee and, you know, be someone guide you to that, um, to, to, to start at home. You know, a lot of moving parts. Would yeah, you exactly. say uh, 200 moving parts to a transaction? I, I did yeah. not know that. That's that's a new stat for me. Yeah, I, I want to say it is. So yeah, don't quote me totally, but I think it's two hundred moving parts. The one, I'll look it up. the it one thing, on a poster. I get someone wants to sell because they think they're going to put more money in their pocket. Statistically, they're wrong. That you make more money with a real tour than you do without a real tour. But even with that said. They still go on the market and they want to sell it themselves. They need to remember that buyers don't want to go it alone anymore. 88% of all buyers have a real estate agent was the last stat I just saw come out of NAR. 88%. So if you want to work with 12% of the market, that's fine. But what makes you think you're going to get top dollar out of a group of individuals that think you're going, they're getting a deal by not using a realtor. They're going to probably be looking to negotiate down more and you're gonna end up getting less because that's where I think a true professional real estate agent and what we go through and what we talk about always is the negotiations, the negotiations. Mm -hmm. It is such a big part of the transaction and that's why you hire us. That's what the big deal is. That's where the big difference is. And you have to just keep that in mind as a individual that may look to sell their house on their own. The buyers don't want to do that. They don't want to work with, uh, statistically speaking, overall, they would rather work with a realtor. And that's up dramatically. It was like 83% back in the day. All right, now it's up to 88. I mean, so that's a big difference. So you wanna call your Realtor or give us a call at the Rudiger Group. You know, if you don't have one, we're always here to help. So the article goes into make the best first impression. Selling your house requires significant amount of time and effort, as we know. Um, doing it right takes experts and understanding today's buyers. Your agent knows the answers to common questions. Do I need to take down my personal art? How much landscaping does my house need? Should I paint my wall colors? And my answer on all of those are maybe, 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 because I haven't seen the property. Right. Personal you get to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. And there again, it lends to expertise. You know, you've been in the homes in the area you know this have seen the competition you do the research all that stuff goes into how you can market and position that seller's home yeah and you look at the one house we just saw that was painted completely black it was an all black remodel oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and everything was just but it looked amazing the house looked amazing i wouldn't repaint that no, but that was that particular house. I can't, the house next door probably would look like. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it, it, if you had a property that had a black room, that might not go. I mean, I've had houses where the walls are purple. And purple is a color that it either looks awesome or it looks horrible. And it really depends on the furniture usually in the room. It also depends on the shade of purple. Yeah. Yeah. If it's a if it's a plum or an eggplant versus green. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. if it's a 
wild, wild purple. Yeah. yeah. No, yikes. So, going into the second reason, maximize your buyer pool and your sale. The average home is getting 3.6 offers, <coughs> according to recent data for NAR, which is great news. We can get you more offers in a bigger pool than the average, just putting it into wherever you're putting it. <coughs> All right. If you're if you're selling it on your own, you might or might not think about three or four different top of mind places to put it. That, like for instance, we Baird Corner, sixteen thousand places just off the bat they automatically go to. So. Right there, would you rather have more people seeing your information? Yeah, I mean, we're everywhere. I mean, yeah. So understanding the fine print and the documents um, is another aspect. Now, in our market, we have attorneys. Not every real estate market has that. We're only like one of four. Um, not even the whole state of Illinois uses attorneys. So that is a nice advantage. I do appreciate having the attorneys in on the transaction, especially considering I've had some transactions that can have gotten pretty legal ease, I guess would be the word I'd use. Um, but still, understanding those documents is one of the biggest reasons why most buyers say they want a real estate professional. That's the biggest aspect, um, is just understanding everything going on. So. And then the last aspect of it is acting as your negotiator that kind of put it off. All right. So selling without an agent, you're doing all your negotiations. So the article goes, the buyer who wants the best deal, the buyer agent who wants, who will use their expertise to work for the buyer. The inspector works for the buyer. The appraiser works for the property value to protect the lender, unless you have an agent, you have no one in your corner working for you yeah. as the seller. So, and I see a lot of deals. It's not that for sale by owners aren't priced correctly to start with. It's, in my opinion, it's the negotiations afterwards. The negotiations is where you benefit and that's where you want to talk to the right real estate agents so um and then you know price is right let's be honest they do get it priced wrong in some cases and they are off in pricing well and not only in pricing but just the time that it takes to work this deal so you let's say you price it well and you post it out there and now you're getting all these appointments for showings. Are you going to be able to take time off from your job to answer the phone every minute and a half while that first few days that everybody's trying to get in to see the property and schedule it? Are you going to be able to have everything done? Then, okay, let's say you get multiple offers. How are you going to know how to vet those offers? Are they good offers? Are they not good offers? Who are you going to talk to? What are you going to do? Yes, you need a written agent. Yeah, it's just a lot. It, it is a lot. So, all right, before we finish off the show today, uh, avoiding the rental trap in 2022. Um, are you one of the many renters thinking that where you live, you know, your lease is going to be up and, you know, I'll just sign another lease or stay here um, just a couple more years? We've talked about it on the show. As you know, rents have been increasing dramatically since 1988, all right? In 2001, rents grew dramatically according to apartmentlist.com. The national median rent has increased by a staggering 17.8%. To put that in context, rent growth from January to November averaged just 2.6% in the pre-pandemic years in 17 to 19. And now we went up 17.8%. In one year, in one year. That's huge. I haven't raised my rents, but 
I somebody is out there raising rent. Yeah, we haven't raised rent either. I'm saying so. That's pretty scary. I was if I was a runner. Yeah, why would, you want to, why would you want to go back to that? No, you'll, it's like you'll never get ahead of the game. You're always, yeah, you're, and because you're just putting money down a hole, yeah. honestly. And when we talked about it on the show, the average net worth between a homeowner and a renter is dramatically different. Mm-hmm. About 6000 for a renter, over 250000 on a homeowner. So, yeah. Um, Realtor.com national housing forecast. In 2022, we expect this trend will continue and fuel rent growth at a national level. We forecast rent growth of 7.1% in the next 12 months. Again, that is a huge number. Um, So if you're looking at getting out of that rental trap, give us a call um, at the Rudiger Group and definitely let's have a conversation. Because I mean, honestly, this is the time to move. As these mortgage prices increase, and prices go up, we are going to get into, could get into a situation where housing is not affordable. It is still affordable. The affordability index is still showing a positive affordability number. Last number we saw, I think was October at 147. Yeah. Well, it's September, October. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see if I can pull that number and we'll look into that. So, all right, that wraps it up from Get Real With Eddie. If you guys have any questions, don't forget, you can go to the website, get real, getrealwitheddy.com and check out all of our information there at any time. Thanks for listening to Get Real With Eddie. Eddie Rudiger is a realtor at Baird & Warner in Plainfield, license number 475-141-896. Managing broker, Steve Engel. For more information on your neighborhood, call Eddie at 815-823-5478 or visit yourdwellings.com.